everybody. It is time to begin our weekly webcast. We, this is a webcast called What's Working. This is where we talk to various preachers, various people in churches that are using uh, marketing or technology to kind of help with their local work. And so we, every week what we try to do is we try to bring in somebody, uh, some kind of expertise in a certain area that can speak to a subject. And this morning we have Craig Rice from the Maple Street Church of Christ in Liberty, Texas. Uh, I've known Craig a long time. I've known him uh, since we went to college together at Stephen F. Austin. And then we didn't talk for about eight or nine years, which I plant firmly on Craig's shoulders. I feel like that was a failing on his part. I had nothing to do with that. Um, but I actually didn't realize that you were preaching until a few years ago, I think when we reconnected. So I, it's, it's good not only to reconnect with you, but also to talk to you on a level that we can both relate on. Um, how long have you been at Maple Street, Craig? About five years. Uh, it was around December, I believe, of 2015. Okay. That might have been 14. Yeah, it's on the calendar somewhere in a text message, something like that. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, I was, uh, at the time, I had just studied on institutionalism. I was in institutionalism. We went, when we went to college together, uh, I wasn't convinced thoroughly in regards to institutionalism. I thought it was just a, you know, that doesn't matter issue. And so I didn't study much on it, but I, I read up on it quite a bit uh, using the Arlington meetings. And so that ended up directing me out of institutionalism. And it just so happened, I'd been preaching as a fill-in preacher, but I really wanted to preach. And uh, uh, I found myself actually, uh, the job that I was working, I, I did marine navigation aids. Uh, wow. I was spending probably more, cause it's kind of a, you know, you had a lot of latitude to work on what you wanted to. And there was a lot of downtime and I found myself studying a lot. Yeah. for Bible. And it got to where it's bothering my conscience. <laughs> yeah. And so this opportunity to preach opened up and uh, I, I applied myself, if you will, you know, and uh, they ended up giving me a chance. I'm very thankful for that because again, uh, preachers coming from institutionalism, a lot of times people won't open the door to that. And I've learned a lot from them. And uh, I hope they've learned at least a little bit from me. They're an older congregation, smaller congregation. And so, um, yeah, so I, um, and in my my ten years of silence, I guess it's been by the way more than eight years. It was probably about let's see, I left in '06, and we maybe spoke up until about '08, and then the, we had dark times. Yeah, and so uh, dark times. Yeah. and uh, I heard I'd actually been wanting to touch out uh, with you and a few other people from Stallings for some time, and so very thankful for y'all's influence, y'all. Uh, in the long run, y'all helped uh, some of the things that I heard there helped me come back to where I think I needed to be scripturally. Yeah. And so I'm, uh, especially Shane, by the way, you interviewed him not too long ago. And uh, uh, he was uh, kind of my best biblical friend away from home. He, he always said the right things and he said it with humility. And uh, I always appreciated that. And uh, I knew him probably better than a lot of people up there at the time. And yeah. that does include you, Brady. But I got to know you fairly well too. So I'll stop talking now. No, that's okay. That's uh, that's the downside of Shane is that he always has a knack for uh, saying or being honest about things. And that's something we all both simultaneously love and hate about him. I feel like we can't riff on him because he's not here, even though he was here, you know, three weeks ago or whatever it is at this point. But yeah, he's, he's, he's a good dude. He always kind of has a good compass to lead back. So um, did you preach in the institutional church or did you, um, did you not start preaching until after you left? I was a fill in. I was a fill-in. Actually, uh, one of the things that ended up uh, probably helping uh, my exodus, because at the time, uh, I had a mindset that uh, I would stay there and fill in as much as I could so that I could preach the truth and kind of at least plant the seed. And, you know, I even told uh, one of the elders at a congregation that isn't institutional and anti-congregation down the road from here, I said, well, I'll just keep doing that. I'll just tell them that I'm going to allocate my money only to the saints. And he looks at me, he goes, push button radio yeah. he goes, you're probably too too young to know what that's talking about but he's talking about the old the old radios back in the day you push one button and the other ones would pop open oh and yeah so they saying that uh, you know you're just making that money available to be misused in other places and so uh that kind of helped expedite things and the, the preacher that was there full-time sounded like mr rogers super super nice guy but could be kind of threatening you kind of wondered if he had a previous you know he was a sniper in vietnam sort of thing going on and uh, anyways, uh, we had a disagreement on the usage of the Lord's money. And uh, I just used singing as a parallel as the pattern for, you know, instrument, no instruments. And uh, anyways, uh, 
he, he called me up and we never did get around to studying. And he preached a, a lesson preaching that you should only use the Lord's money for Christians. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, all the verses or not only for Christians, but only, you know, for anyone who asks of it. Mm-hmm. And then ends it with, you know, Romans 16, 17, yeah. uh, any, anyone who causes divisions, you know, and <laughs> basically yeah. used the verses improperly and then said, if anyone disagrees with me, yeah. so I preached about division the next week. And so, uh, but anyway, so yeah, I was in institutionalism. I'm really bad about long answers. No, that's fine. Um, Luckily this is a long interview, so you can go as long as you want to. And people I'm sure would be more than willing to stay here for the better part of the day, six, seven hours. So just keep going. Yeah. Do you still have any contact with the people from the institutional church or are you? I do. Um, Many of them are open-minded, and we've studied uh, a few times. Uh, uh, one of the problems that you run into, that you run into with anyone else, is that you know their schedules conflict, and there may be some uh, you know purpose in that. They may purposely you know not be available because you know it's a topic that they don't really want to deal with, mm-hmm. uh, because it's easier you know at least now deal, just doing the things the way that we're doing them rather than challenging our minds. But yeah, I do still have contact with many of them. Well, that's good. That, yeah. That's good that you can still be an influence. I mean, and, and you're right. That's just some, that's something we all do. You know, if, I've, if I'm one to avoid a conversation, I'll just, I'll put it off. Yeah. I've got something going on, but you're right. We should all, we should always be willing to study and maybe some of those people will be willing to study with you in the future. Um, I know uh, the church right, right now, Maple street is where Jeremy Hodges was at. I knew Jeremy, um, Right. In between when I knew you, I feel like there's kind of bookends for that. Um, hopefully this is a continuous bookend. But yeah, Jeremy is up in the um, D.C. area now. I know he's doing good work up there. Um, so it's I'm glad that you got your first work. I didn't realize you'd been there that long. I feel like um, we should have reconnected earlier. But that's um, like you said, that's my fault. Um, I know that you threw that squarely back on my shoulders. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's good to hear that you're doing good work down there. Um, I want to interview you today because uh, we had talked a lot um, through private message kind of in our venture to reconnect. We've, we've talked a lot about um, you know, using social media and using the internet to kind of build an online presence. And I knew you had, we had actually talked last summer when we were in the process of developing a course on social media and SEO and stuff like that, which we're actually in the process of redesigning, but we want to put more evidence and more stats and stuff in on that. So you will get that for free. Um, but, uh, that's a course that hopefully be available next year. We want to do kind of multiple ones, social media and SEO and website and different things. But anyways, um, that's where our kind of interest got together where we started talking about social media in regards to evangelism. Um, but you have started using a software that probably nobody knew existed six months ago. Uh, but because of coronavirus, now everybody's using it and it's, I saw a meme the other day, and I think I referenced this in another interview. I saw a meme the other day that said, shout out to all the preachers who are doing their first live stream and trying to make it not look like the inside of Osama's cave. Um, (laughs) It's funny now because, you know, we've we've been talking about this stuff for the last, you know, eight months or so, kind of technology and social media and stuff. But but the the software that you're using, like I said, nobody knew existed at the beginning of the year. And now everybody's using it. Everybody's kind of at least me, I'm fumbling around with it. Um, but I'm talking about OBS, open broadcast, open broadcast system, at least if I'm remembering that, um, that right. And you would actually originally ask me how to use it. And I was like, well, this is, this is what we've done. We did a webinar on it. I think it was the first webinar we did at the Akinos, and it was just completely all over the place. I mean, I was, I was brand new to it too. Um, but you've used it and you've used it religiously since then. Um, because, and not just on Sundays, you do it every single day. You do, you still do in a daily Bible study, don't you, with the church there, Maple Street? Uh, it's three times a day or three times a week. Uh, I, uh, I needed a little break in there cause I was actually the first week that I did it, it was, it was seven days in a row. In wow. truth, we told right now I'm not doing Sundays. Okay. Uh, I need to set up a, a, a camera system at the church building and, uh, or, or not a camera system, but a, a rigging of some sort to make it work a little bit better and probably end up playing it back with the, the PowerPoint in it. But, um, but yeah, I do three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And part of the reason why I wanted to do that is, you know, the first week that we had off, I didn't, I didn't go on Facebook Live. And when I say off, I mean, you know, we didn't assemble. And first off, as an evangelist, I was not comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I called people up. I tried to study with them. I tried to meet with them somehow uh, to encourage them, to edify them. And uh, 
I felt like it just, it didn't work out right. And uh, I mean, it was beneficial, yes, but um, I felt like there was a golden opportunity available here. And so the first thing I wanted to do is at least get to where I was doing these videos. I remember back during Hurricane Harvey, I think Shane was one of the ones, I think uh, uh, Ben, uh, wow, I can't remember his last name right now. He used to preach at Dallin Road. Oh, Ben Lee. Ben Lee. The uh, Ben Lee. The Ben Lee. Yes. Who I have never met in per person, and I only awkwardly spoke with him once. He is, as a, we spoke. He is a fantastically um, interesting individual. I love that dude. Yeah. Well, one day, one day I'll meet him. Uh, uh, but I saw them doing these videos, and I really wanted to do one. But uh, whether, you know, for one reason or, or another, I didn't do them at that time. And again, this was another opportunity, and it's much more broad. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the case of Hurricane Harvey, it was just, you know, Texas. Uh, in this case, there's a lot of opportunities available. And, you know, there's a part of me that wants to do it because I want the congregation of Maple Street to have more broadcast, you know, people to hear the word. Uh, and so there's places that you can put those out there. And you don't want to bombard it so that you end up getting blocked from the pub, you know, the local websites. But, you know, just to let people know. But also there's a broader sense in which you're not just trying to get the congregation to grow. There are people out there right now that are st stranded or maybe have illnesses and they're looking for encouragement right now. Yeah. And so we want us to grow in, in spirit, you know, and, and in truth and just to grow in knowledge. I think that's part of the picture that uh, Ephesians 4 talks about. Just, you know, we're building up one another. And so uh, that's one of the reasons I started doing this. Yeah. And it was a challenge, by the way, the first time I did it, uh, you had told me, and I, I am a famous procrastinator. And uh, I think I asked you the day before that I was going to do my first Sunday. And uh, you said, oh, no, you can practice on Facebook. Did I? <laughs> so I just clicked Facebook Live. Yeah. And it said it, it was grayed out. It wouldn't let you do it. Then the second time I did it, yeah. I thought, okay, maybe it's cleared out now because we're past a prime time. Okay. Happened again. I'm, I'm texting all the members of the congregation yeah. each of these times, by the way. <laughs> to let them know. Yeah. So, by the way, Brady pointed something out. If y'all don't know, there is a, an option on the, the, uh, the viewability of this mm -hmm. to set it to you only. Yeah. Do that. If you haven't done this, do yeah. that before you do this. I've seen and, a lot of practice uh, videos with nobody in the auditorium and somebody looking in the camera, you know, looking around <laughs> at it. It's like, I mean, it's, it's all in good intentions. But, yeah, you can, you can avoid all that if you want to. Yeah. And, uh, and then on the OBS side of it, I had done – I'd set it up, I'd set the timer because you could s set a schedule and I'd, mm -hmm. I'd set it to whatever the next iteration, I was doing it in 15 minute iterations. Yeah. Uh, and on the third iteration, I think by that time it was 11, 15. Mm -hmm. I was on the camera, I could see me, I, I had uh, not a lick of sound. <laughs> yeah. And so everyone saw me and I was like. Yeah. You know, and so oh, you had that number to, priest, Probably. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, um, that's how it happens. And so one of the things, and I know part of the reason you're, you're doing these videos is so that we can, as preachers, be more effective. Yeah. And so, you know, the old saying, practice, 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 or practice makes perfect mm -hmm. uh, is very true. Uh, and one of the best ways to practice is by yourself yeah. uh, sometimes. Now, eventually you have to cross that threshold and you have to get to the point where you are doing this in front of people. And so uh, if you're one of those people that, I mean, I'm talking to preachers. It's not like you've never spoken in front of anybody. So once you get that part, you know, you should be fine. Yeah. Uh, but try to work out the technical glitches, unlike myself. <laughs> and uh, in that way, you're not finding yourself in that situation. And make sure uh, if you are doing on OBS, and uh, I, I hope I'm not getting too far off here, but if you're, if you're doing something in OBS, uh, when you are adding in, different sources and you have different scenes and different sources yeah. um make sure that you add in on whatever you know scene you're in make yeah. sure you add audio capture yeah uh, audio input capture and if this bar is not moving mm -hmm. when you're there yeah 
you've got a problem. See, it's moving now. I, I don't know if you can see this or not. In yeah, fact, I don't let's, know. Uh, let's actually back up because I actually can't see it on my screen for whatever reason. It's still just got a okay. picture of you. But before we go into that, I want to kind of back up because I know there's probably at least a few people that are listening to this saying, yeah, I don't know what OBS okay. is. I don't know what any people are talking about. So if you're with us to this point, I want to kind of just back up real quick uh, because Craig's covering a lot of good ground here. And I want to I want to hit all these points, but you've, you've touched on a lot of things all at once. First off, if you haven't heard of OBS, um, OBS is a live stream software. It's, there's a lot of live stream softwares that are out there. Um, you can use Restream.io is one of the big ones. I think Ecamm.live is another one that's Mac specific, um, or maybe it's Windows specific. I'm not exactly sure. But what OBS is, is it's a software that allows you to stream to, I don't know if you can do multiple devices. Craig can maybe can speak to that better than I can. But I know you can at least stream to one device. And what it allows you to do is create a composite of a live stream for, people's, for people to see. So like if you've got, like we used it one Sunday for, um, to have me stand, or maybe, I'm sorry, the song leader rather, and then the song slides for the worship right next to me, uh, right next to the song leader. And so you can use it to create a composite live stream in real time for people. The problem with it is, um, is that it's, it's very resource intensive. So if you're trying to stream from, from your uh, computer to, um, uh, to OBS and then to Facebook and then to people's homes, there's multiple connection breaks. And if you don't have, if you don't have good internet or if you're broadcasting, as Craig mentioned, during a peak time, which is 9.30 Sunday morning, 10.30 Sunday morning, you're probably gonna encounter some, some major glitches on that. Um, what Craig was talking about was he kept trying to back up the feed to hit a time that wasn't a peak time, and it still wasn't necessarily working, no matter how many cycles he went back. Um, so OBS is a really good it's a really good um, set of software. We actually did a webinar on it, as I mentioned uh, several weeks ago. So if you if you need help with that, referencing that kind of how to get started, but um, the best part about it is it's free. Um, it's open source, which means people can come in and kind of make adjustments as they want. Uh, but it's it's free to download. It's very easy to use. Surprisingly, considering that it's you know an open source software that's mainly done by developers. But if you're in the need, or if you're in the market for a streaming software and you're on a very tight budget, as most churches are, especially right now, um, look into OBS because that's I think will help you a lot. So um, I want to kick it back to Craig uh, as he's talking about the whole scenes and audio captures and things like that. Um, explain more a little bit about what you were talking about. I kind of wanted to give the background real quick. Okay, well, so within OBS, and I, again, if you're not able to switch to the, to the, to the actual my, my screen, that's perfectly fine. I don't know how to do it. I am not familiar with Zoom. So uh, I, I don't use Zoom. Uh, I've been warned about some security things, but I think I'm kind of past that. So thank you for introducing me. Yeah. Uh, again, as you did OBS, so before long, I'll be doing another one of these on OBS. <laughs> no. Um, but um, no, I'm not an expert. First off, I, you know, I, uh, I use it daily and my mindset on things is I probably treat life like an RPG sometimes. Uh, I'm just trying to acquire skills. Uh, you know, you want to build, uh, you know, your personal, who you are so that you are more uh, efficient at what you're doing. And so this is just one of the things I've been wanting to do for a long time. Mm -hmm. But uh, so what you have when you, when you start out with this, and I'm not going to use the technical terms, at the bottom left hand of, of your uh, screen, you're going to have scenes and you're going to have sources. And so for each scene, you have a, a, a screen that it starts out as a blank canvas. And you have to you know, populate that with what you want. And so uh, for me, what I do is uh, for my daily podcast, what I, or podca podcast, uh, for my daily video or my three times a week video, I start out with a countdown timer, which is a pain to do, by the way, on a Keynote. I think uh, Microsoft Office probably has a better option for countdown timers, but I start out with a countdown timer so that people know that it's coming, but truth be told, it's just, I think it looks cool. Uh, but- um, <laughs> Thanks for being honest. Yeah, and so then you transition into something so that people can actually see what you're doing. And one of the things that I've ran into is uh, the, the moment you transition, it pops over to another scene. 
And so if you're trying to interact with that scene, you have to quickly go back to it. And so that's one of the things uh, that I've noticed, and that's more of a practical application to people that have been doing this. But uh, it's a real distraction the first couple times you do it, and sometimes later on if you didn't wake up quite right, which happened about a week ago. Yeah. Um, so, but you want to populate these scenes. And so the primary ones you want, if you're using a PowerPoint presentation, and what the way that you did it is not the way that I did it. It wouldn't work for me at the time because I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. But you can go to your sources, and let me get back to a scene that has more sources. Um, and so you're gonna have different sources and you can add in what you want. And so if you want your video, I mean, in order to actually have a video, you have to add that source. And uh, you can edit that source and you know make it the size that you want. So for instance, right now, I know y'all are seeing me in this full screen, but if you want to bring it in to you know just this right here, you can drag those bars and and you show how to do that on your video. And so I'm not going to get into that, but uh, you know you want to add that in. You also want to make sure that you add in your in your audio input. So you want to add in your audio and your uh, your uh, video as well. And so uh, these are basic things. And again, I think you did a pretty good job covering that. Now, one of the things I did want to point out that I ran into and. Uh, that that is the when you did your PowerPoint, you used window capture, isn't that right? I think so, yeah. So you can export you can export your 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 PowerPoint or your keynote or whatever you're using uh to window capture. Right. And so that's one of the ways you can do it. I don't use it that way. What I do is I end up exporting it and uh what do I use? <laughs> I use browser. Uh, yeah. You can plug it in that way. Uh, honestly, I may end up going to window capture because I feel like maybe you've got more versatility because if I try to go back yeah. uh, under the uh, the browser function, it doesn't work quite right. Yeah. And so I don't know if that works better with window capture. But uh, So there are alternate ways to do it. But what I wanted to say is as far as window capture goes, because I did use it elsewhere, mm. you want to put when you create a new one and you click OK, make sure you put show windows with empty names. Yeah. That cost me a lot of time. Yeah. And uh, Can you say that again, show windows with what? Show windows with empty names. And when you do that, so if you don't do that and you click OK, uh, oh, I just accidentally exited out. So if you do that and you exit out, there's a drop down menu with windows. Yeah. And if you don't have show window with empty names, it'll only show certain things and it won't show uh your browser mm -hmm. uh, and it won't show your um for instance i use eSword. yeah and it won't show that you have to show the windows with empty names and right. uh, once you do that it seems to work fine yeah and so that that helps you out quite a bit and uh it'll just stop a lot of head banging against yeah. you know or desk banging whatever <laughs> um, hopefully the head banging just begins at that point yeah yeah <laughs> Let the show begin. Uh, yeah, there's um, yeah, I, I think what you're touching on is one of the failures. I say failures. It's one of the quirks of OBS. Um, you know, if you pay, and I know, as I mentioned earlier, there are live stream services. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you're live streaming a, a worship service, it probably is not a bad idea to invest in something like Restream.io because it, it makes everything so much easier. If you're trying to do something in OBS, there's little quirks here and there that'll probably throw you off. One of which is, as you mentioned, the, the windows that kind of, you know, show nothing. Um, but also, uh, we had somebody uh, just last week that wrote in, they watched the webinar and they told me, they asked the question, why is it that my screen blinks? Um, and they said, I, I don't know why my screen keeps blinking whenever it's in real time. And I had no idea. My screen was blinking too and I had no idea. Well, that's because if you use those different sources and those sources are overlapping, uh, even just a little bit, then it blinks because it can't figure out which one it is, which yeah. isn't a big deal once you know it, <laughs> but it's really hard kind of to get going. I encountered some issues with OBS when I first started uh, because I was not, I knew that there was a lag when it comes to Facebook Live. And I know, I know that you've talked about this too. I was not aware of how much of a lag there was when you throw OBS into the system. So when you, when you stream through OBS to Facebook Live to people, and then they respond to a question you ask, you're talking about, upwards of 45 to 60 seconds from the time that you say something to the time that you get a response back through Facebook Live. 
So you just need to be aware that there's going to be a lag in response time. There's also going to be a lag in what you're saying and what people are, what's actually appearing on the screen. So there are some quirks about it, as you mentioned, but I, I don't know. I think it's worth investing in. What would you say? You know, I remember when you first started using it a month or so ago and all of us were brand new to it, you know, a couple months ago. When you first started looking into it, would you say it was a, a really tight learning curve or was it relatively, you know, once you understood some of the basics, was it relatively easy to get your feet underneath you? No, it was relatively easy. Uh, just don't wait till, you know, 15 minutes before you're going to use it. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it was relatively easy. Uh, but I, you know, I like playing with tech things. Uh, yeah. I have fun with them. You can't tell from going to our website, sorry. Um, uh, that's something I need to work on. Uh, you know, time is, is, is scarce in some ways, but no, I'd say it's relatively easy, but uh, just, I'm very much a, a, a trial by fire type of person. I, I tend to learn best when I'm just plug and playing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, um, I click buttons. In fact, that's what I did this morning. I didn't read up anymore on it. I just went around and click buttons and check to see what it did. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's uh, find a task and, and make it happen. And so uh, that's kind of my, that's, that's how this whole live stream thing started. Yeah. You know, and, um, so, yeah. and, and, and truth be told there, you know, at, I know one of the reasons you wanted me on here was because you wanted to talk about doing daily. And as we yeah. kind of made it clear, I'm not daily, but I'm <laughs> semi daily. Um, but one of the things that really, you know, was an obstacle to me at first was I had seen other people doing this and I just, you know, getting past, you know, the first time you preach in front of an audience that you've never met before, sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable, but after that you're fine. But for me, what it was, was I, I, I saw so many people that I feel are so much more qualified yeah. uh, and uh, that are, you know, better preachers than me, probably better technical experts than I am, better Bible students than I am. And I had to ask myself, is there anything I have to offer? And, and yeah. uh, what came out of that was, well, this is a challenge. Yeah. You know, this, this will help you grow. Yeah. And hopefully in the process of you doing this, it'll help others grow. Yeah. And so that, that's kind of the aim there. And I think that's, that's a statement about Christianity. Yeah. You know, you know you're not going to be an expert at first. Yeah. You know, you're going you're gonna to strive for it. And what is my goal as a preacher? You know, reprove, rebuke, exhort, you know, uh, but further the administration of God, which is by faith. Yeah. And so can I do that by, by sending messages about God and, and through these daily videos? And, yeah. and so there are going to be times when things don't go right. And I know we're not wrapping it up yet. And I'm saying wrap up sort of things right now, but. We can um, go until you stay, stand and sing. As soon as you say stand and sing. Yeah, no, absolutely. If anyone has any needs. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. you know, you're going to run into troubles depending on your congregation. I didn't do this because my congregation told me to. They mentioned that someone else was doing it. One, one of the members mentioned it. Uh, there's a, a preacher nearby and he does a good, I, I've heard that he does every day of the week, but I think he only does it once a week on Mondays. Yeah. And um, anyways, he does a good job. And, um, you know, someone had mentioned that. And so, I wanted to try to do something, but I felt inferior. And, you know, there was one day I, I at the time, my wife was still recovering from childbirth. And, and uh, so I had the baby in here in the stroller right next to me <laughs> and, or not in the, whatever, whatever you call it. I'm not good with, uh, but she started fussing. Yeah. I pulled a no, no. I, I started right. holding the baby. Yeah. That was a distraction. And so, you know, one of the things when you do this, you're doing it for, you know, depending on why you're doing it, you may be doing it because the congregation said, look, if you're not going to do this, you're not going to stay preaching here. I don't know. Yeah. That, that wasn't my condition. Uh, this, this is something that's going to go with me, whether I, you know, stay at Maple Street or go somewhere else, you know, it's, uh, and so uh, this is for God. Right. And so uh, when someone tells me it's a distraction, I remove it. Yeah. If it's within reason. Yeah. You know, and, and I could understand that. And so, uh, you know, my wife had gotten better, and so I, I took care of that. And, uh, but you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be – some people are real sticklers on it has to be at a specific time. Yeah. And that does help. It does help. And uh, with Facebook, though, it's a little bit more lenient yeah. because you can just go back and watch it later. Yeah. And, and so in the same with YouTube, and I haven't 
messed around with YouTube a whole lot. And uh, uh, I did look up, by the way, while you were talking, uh, not within a single instance of OBS itself uh, can you broadcast to multiple pl yeah. platforms. That's, a, that's the downside of it, too. Yeah. And so uh, there may be, uh, you know, you can always rig things. Yeah. You know, there are backdoors ways to do things. But the question is, do you want to hack around with it that much? <laughs> if you want to find multiple ways of doing it, what you might be better off doing is instead of recording this directly to Facebook, yeah. is you could probably set, and I was actually just playing around with it earlier, you could record the whole stream uh -huh. to a video and then broadcast it later to whatever source you want and go drink a cup of coffee and have lunch. Uh -huh. That's actually yeah, so. what we do is we record, or we were, we were recording services and then uh, broadcasting them on our Facebook. I, I'm sorry, we were, for these videos, we're actually recording this previously. So there'll be two or three weeks before this goes out. And then we'll broadcast it to set to premiere on YouTube and Facebook at the exact same time. So it looks like you're, you know, you're seeing a live video. Um, so you're right, there is workarounds to it. That's one of the things I like about OBS is you have a lot of leeway in the way that you can use it. For instance, I know that you can do, um, you can implement, as you were talking about the different scenes and the different sources, you can bring up a green screen and have something happening behind you. I, and I actually, for a brief second, thought about doing that for services when we're recording them live. I'm like, well, what I could do is take a picture of the pulpit and I can have it behind me and I can just stand right here, you know, and have you know, jeans on and my suit top. I didn't think about that longer than two seconds because it just, it felt very disrespectful to me. And I'm not, that's not what this is about. Um, but it shows the, the breadth of the capabilities that you can use it for. I mean, you can use it for green screens. You can have, you know, keynotes. I know one of the, the things that a lot of people use it for is they have like, a, they have their head basically cut off, you know, right. right in the shot right here. And then their whole background is a keynote. So there's lots of, there's lots of different functionalities. But as you mentioned, it kind of depends on how deep you want to go with it. I know, for instance, the OBS app is terrible. Um, I've heard that the app, if you connect it, but that being said, if you've got a, you know, if you've got a brand new iPhone, you've got an iPhone 11, you know, Pro Max, XS, Luxury Edition, you know, and be dazzled with diamonds, then I think you could probably broadcast it in 4K using that as an external monitor, as a feed or as a source to your OBS system. Right. So you can get super elaborate with it, but it just kind of depends about, or depends on how deep you want to go down that rabbit hole. But I really liked what you said a second ago because... Um, and it's the only thing I've liked uh, in this entire conversation. But, um, okay. yeah. No, I, I liked what you said a second ago because I think that was very raw of you to say. Um, you know, a lot of us are trying to figure this. A lot of preachers are trying to figure this thing out. And, you know, the presentation that we're used to seeing on Sunday mornings is all very, it's all very scripted. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, you know, preachers prepare all week for that moment. They sometimes do run-throughs. They go through multiple revisions. But Facebook Live is a completely different beast. And especially when you implement a software, you know, for somebody who's not tech savvy, you introduce a software onto that, it just heightens that scale of uncomfortability. So the fact that you, the fact that you know that, but that you see a need for, for it to be used every day, I think that speaks to the passion for the gospel. And that's really where all of us as Christians should be at, is this is a tool I can use to help better the spread of the gospel uh, it's going to look stupid for a while as I get used to it. There's going to be mistakes that are being made, but if it'll ultimately benefit me and if I can future proof me for the long run, that's what I want to do. And I think that's, I think that's the right approach for it. So I appreciate you being honest about that because all of us feel that way. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if it's something you're reluctant to do, if it's something you're reluctant to do for whatever reason it is, my suggestion is there's better, there's no better time than now, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, as far as the everyday thing, you, you have, I probably spend at least an hour for, for the 15 minutes I do at least, you know, and, uh, that includes, you know, there, there, I will be perfectly honest again. I am a procrastinator by nature. Uh, there have been times when, you know, I've got five minutes left, and I, you know, I don't have a haircut because of this whole situation. You know, I, I'm trying to keep that lady in Dallas in jail. By the way, I want y'all all to notice he screens these things. He is, he's part of the, the conspiracy. He waits two weeks before he broadcasts this. <laughs> yeah. This isn't even going to air, y'all. So, I'm uh, smart enough for a conspiracy, I promise you. 
<laughs> but um, get it started. You know, there's, uh, you know, obviously you want to do the background. You don't want to just get up on a video and start riffing. Yeah. You know, teach something that you are confident in. Try to teach something that is going to be beneficial. Uh, not just, and this was part of my aim when I originally did this. I did not want to, on a public platform, to get into something that is uh, a brotherhood issue. Mm -hmm. I want to build faith. Yeah. I want to, uh, you know, people, people during this time, why would God allow this corona pandemic? You know, I, I know uh, someone preached, uh, Chris Emerson preached a, a few weeks back, you know, is God punishing us or something to that effect? Yeah. Well, so my, the, the theme of my, my video is necessary nourishment, which is kind of, I was a little reluctant to use that because the necessary nourishment is God's word, right? But, um, but the idea is we want to get to know God better. Right. And so I started talking about first and foremost, who is God? Yeah. And so we, we want to do the things, I think, especially if we're doing it on a public thing, uh, that is going to build faith in God. Yeah. We, we want to leave uh, seeds of, uh, you know, things that, in, that will lead people to seek out the authority of God mm -hmm. so that they, you know, question maybe whether or not, well, my preacher said, or this, this uh, commentary said this. And so, you know, when it comes to the tactics that we take, right. uh, we, we want to be mindful of those things, who our audience is, and if we find ourselves in a place where we're getting people, and this is something I'm still trying to work on, uh, people from outside of the quote unquote church of Christ. And I use that term reluctantly sometimes because it's a descriptive term. Right. It's not a label. And uh, if we find ourselves in a place where we've got people from outside of that realm, we might find ourselves in a place where we can have debates with people using platforms like this. Yeah. Uh, and so those are things you have to do one, one day at a time. And so, uh, but it all starts with the first video. It all starts with the first, uh, and, and maybe it's not a video for you. Maybe it's a, um, maybe it's a, a multiple times a week, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Like a status update. Yeah. A status update. And I'll be honest up until I did these videos, I was annoyed by Facebook. I got, you know, uh, you know, you have one new something comes up and I was like, okay, yeah, it's a video posted on the local whatever website. And I'm just like, okay, thanks. And, um, you know, and it, it plays with your mind, but also something to point out when it comes to these videos, they can be a real encouragement to you as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're encouraging other people, but you know, maybe, you know, if you're, and I've been fortunate that my congregation, I haven't had a lot of struggles uh, in regards to, you know, the diatrophies, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, but maybe you're dealing with that at your congregation and, uh, you know, you can have these videos and you can realize, you know, it, it, at least get some positive comments. Yeah. You know, obviously don't let it get to your head too much, you know, uh, uh, because then you might become diatrophies. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, these videos are, you know, these, these videos, whether it's a video or like you said, status update, whether it's a blog, uh, they are opportunities to get God's word out, to further the administration of God, which is by faith. And, you know, I, I'm thinking about what you said, and I know you're saying it half jokingly, uh, but, you know, that's, there's not a lot you can say except be persistent. Yeah. You know, uh, make, find something that is of value in God's word. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's about him. Mm -hmm. It's about his will. Find a way to further that. And, uh, you know, try to make it valuable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's something you're going to keep improving upon yeah. if you're doing it right. Yeah. And uh, so I, I had a conversation with someone the other day who was um, in their 70s. And, uh, you know, they, they'll make jokes every now and then and, the, you know, say something to the effect of, yeah, I ran across some notes the other day. And I said, that's some pretty. And he said, those are some pretty interesting thoughts. I'd have to preach a sermon on that. And he looked at the top of the page and realized it was him. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, we forget things, yeah. you know, Peter says, you know, something to the effect. And I, I paraphrase it. I paraphrase it. Craig paraphrased version. Uh, I, I, I'm not reluctant to stir up by way of reminder. Right. We need those reminders. 
Uh, whether we are a 70-year-old Christian or we are this uh, green behind these, you know, a uh, 20-year-old or 15-year-old, we need those reminders. And, and preachers need them too. We never, you know, we should never be arrogant and assume that we know everything. And so um, I hope I haven't gone beyond what I should say. Uh, yeah. and I hope that actually is beneficial. Yeah. Um, but uh, that, that needs to be our frame of mind. It's, it's not for our glory. It's for God's glory. And that'll help us get past that roadblock yeah. of, of fearing to do this. If we stumble, we correct it. If we do it right, it's to God's glory. Yeah. And I think as long as you, as long as people understand that you're trying to do it for the right reasons, people are going to be patient with you. We've had, you know, even with these videos and any video I put on Facebook, and I'm sure everybody else would speak to this too. You know, people, as long as they feel like you're being honest with them and you're not trying to, you know, shortchange the process or anything like that, they'll be patient with you. And I, I like what you said about, I like what you said about needing reminders, because I think that's one thing that videos on Facebook in general allow us to have, or videos in general, is you can revisit it. Um, you know, even that virtual Bible summit that we had um, now is over a month ago, almost a month and a half ago, as we record this, we still get 100, 500 plus views every single day from people all across the world that watch that, that didn't even know it was happening in real time, but somehow have found a way back to it. And that's one of the powerful things is, it's easy to look at a video and you say, Oh, you know, I only see the number three, you know, there's only three people watching or you look, you, yes. you know, a day later you look at the video you're like, wow, 40 views. But then six months down the road and you look at it and you're like, wow, there's 200, 300 views on that. And then you look at the stats and there's, you know, 80 unique viewers. It, it shows the power of video and it shows the power of live video and the long staying effect of it. So I think it was really cool to speak on that. I appreciate you talking about that. Um, I know we're approaching the end of our time here, but I want to let you have the last word. I want, is there anything that you want people to know? I know you've kind of talked about it. You had a very like sermon-esque denouement down there, but is there anything that you want people to know on, about live streaming in general, about OBS, just kind of some final words that people can take home with them? Well, so thank you, by the way, for inviting me. I'm, I'm humbled. Uh, and, and honestly, I, when you told me that I was going to get this opportunity, I didn't feel that I was worthy. And so whether or not everyone who hears this feels that it was worthwhile or not, that's, that's up to them. Uh, so I did want to make one more comment actually on your last comment, and then I'll bring this to a close. I know uh, it's, it's approaching lunchtime. And so uh, God's word is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful for so many reasons. There are so many lessons that can be learned in this life and the next. I'm going to tell you something personal. Uh, I had a child February 14th. Uh, well, my wife had the child. I didn't go through that. But uh, I had a newborn child. I had to watch my wife uh, have high blood pressure. Uh, I had to grasp with some possibilities of losing her. Uh, and I had to go through that. And a few, a little while later after that, uh, I started dealing with some of my own health issues, partially dealing with a newborn baby, a messed up sleep cycle. And I wound up in the ER because I was stressing out about this. I called the preacher, told him what was going on. And he quoted verses back to me that I had just studied for the very purpose of getting anxiety out of my system. And I say this to say, when it comes to these videos, sometimes what we hear from someone else, even if we've been reading on it, can move us to accept that truth. Hearing it from someone else can make a monumental difference in our processing. And at the end of the day, it's the power of God's word that's at work there. It's not the fact that this, uh, this person is telling me, but sometimes knowing that someone else is there, <clears throat> someone else is going through that or has been through that can just be monumental. And don't forget that. And so, again, the power of, of a daily or a multi, multiple times a week uh, broadcast is that you open up that opportunity to connect to people. Now, it may be an opportunity to strengthen someone that's already in Christ. That is edifying the church. That is growing the church. But it may be that you reach out to someone who's going through this that is outside of the church, that doesn't understand who God is, has a wrong image of who God is. And you're presenting that message. You putting that out there may save their week, but it may save their soul. 
Mm -hmm. And so we do this, we preach, not just because we have a congregation. We preach because we are trying to do what God sent his son to do. We're, we're trying to save lives. Right. We're trying to seek and save those that are lost. And, uh, you know, we, had all, we all at one point were lost uh, because of our sins. And it took someone taking the opportunity to come and speak to us, to risk rejection. And that's what we do when we do things like this. We risk rejection. And so we have to get past that threshold. And as far as OBS goes, look, any of y'all are welcome to contact me. I may not know the answer. Be confident in saying, I don't know. But follow that up with, I'll look into it. Yeah. And follow that up with actually looking into it. Yeah. And so uh, there's a lot to be gained. And I'm, Brady, I got to tell you, thank you. Uh, and I'm saying that from the sincerity of my heart. I wouldn't be doing this right now if you hadn't opened that door. And I wouldn't have even thought about doing this if I hadn't seen other people doing a variation of it. Now, some people have the advantage. You know, uh, you see some congregations where they have beautiful uh, video presentations. And if you ask the preacher how it's happening, and I think you had that interaction with the preacher in the past week, yeah. what's that? What's OBS? Yeah. And so... Uh, Make use of those motivations. Make use of these, these uh, tools that are made available to us. And we are so fortunate to live in an age where there are so many tools made available to us. Yeah. I don't know if that's the providence of God. That's beyond my pay grade. But it's a beautiful thing. And so I guess my closing thoughts on all of this is just continue trying, continue trying to grow, uh, whether it's OBS, whether it's uh, keynote, whether it's something else. And realize that that growth is never going to end. Have the humility to realize I have something more to learn. Yeah. I love that, man. That's some great. That's some great comments right there. I appreciate it. And I think a very good way to uh, end it. Um, I appreciate you spending your time with us, man. I hope you have a great rest of the week. I hope you feel better. I know you. I know you said that you recently had a kid uh, three or four months ago, and <clears throat> we had one back in September, our third, and it's still rough on us. So I can sympathize with you. But um, give my best to your wife, and I hope that y'all all have a much easier time moving forward. Thank you so much, Brady. We're good, by the way, now. Okay. In, in, so thank you, and you have a wonderful week, too. You too, man.